Hello everybody and welcome to episode 23. This isn't going to be a particularly uh, feature-rich episode. We're mostly uh, just going to be fixing a bug and improving something behind the scenes a little. So uh, you will have noticed, because hopefully because I pointed it out at the end of the last episode, um, we can't throw pots upwards at the moment. Um, if we just aim up, we just can't seem to throw upwards. Um, and that's because our simplistic... Um, Collision detection for finding something we can interact with uh, when we press the spacebar. Um, simply checks a point, um, finds to see if there is an entity there, and if there is an entity there, and that entity has a script, it will um, it will run that script. Okay, which causes a problem when we're facing upwards because the position we're checking just happens to overlap with this pot. I suppose we could fix that just by moving the dot further down, um, but this has a bunch of other problems as well. Like if I throw this and I have to get this quite accurate, it can be a little tricky. Um, that's probably not gonna be good enough, no. But if I end up with like something like this where I have like uh, overlapping uh, entities here, I've got a grass and a pot here. Um, if I'm not lucky, which I'm not here, the, uh, the player is going to keep finding the grass uh, which uh, is an entity, so I'll say, okay, I found an entity, it doesn't have a script, um, so carry on as normal, and so I will just do a roll, um, which is a problem, because there is a pot underneath there that we just never got to check, because we're only doing a simple single uh, collision check, which is just going to return the first thing Game Maker and its infinite wisdom decides uh, is the thing it should return, okay? It has to make a choice. I don't know what arbitrary thing it uses to make that choice, but it makes that choice and if it's just happens to be the wrong way around you're going to end up with a problem like this when things overlap okay so that's a problem there's other problems with it as well so what we're going to do is just improve the system to first of all check a small area rather than a point which will make things a little bit nicer when like we have npcs like it's quite clear if i press the space bar here i kind of want to talk to this npc but because of the way i'm doing um the position checks uh, that's not going to work i have to be slightly higher up so having a bit of area will give us some leniency there, which will be nice. And we're going to use a collision list function instead, okay? It's really not much more complicated. It's just what same thing we've done in our basic uh, actual, you know, collision checks um, for colliding with entities and stuff using a list. Um, it's not, not that much more complicated, but um, it helps us out a lot because it lets us fix some of these issues whereby we can check to see if the thing is the thing we've lifted or not. Uh, we can see if there's multiple objects there. We can skip over ones that don't have any script until we find something we do want to interact with and so on and just makes makes things a little bit better. Okay, so the code we're going to be modifying this time um, is our free state. So in player states, player state free, this whole chunk of text. Um, and now we'll shrink this away a bit because we don't really need it. We'll make this nice and big. And we're going to scroll down to this section here, our activate key logic. Uh, one of the ones we've uh, actually commented fairly well, which tells us the flow of what we want to do. And as I was saying, the problem comes in here. These three lines here are the entire of how we find a, an entity to interact with. And it's clear we need something a little more um, complicated than that in order to solve some of these problems. So I'm going to get rid of this one line here that's just a simple um, instance position check that just finds the first entity it can in this position. We're going to keep these two lines because these are going to... Uh, we still want that rough point like in front of the player in whichever direction they're facing. But I'm going to add a new variable that's going to be activate size. Um, it's just going to be four um, to represent the kind of rectangle uh, that we're going to uh, draw. Okay, so I, I say size, it's more like half width, right? Because uh, I guess a square doesn't really have a radius, right? Um, I mean, I suppose I could do it as a radius as a circle, but I'm going to stick to a square. I understand squares. Okay. <laughs> so activate size is four. Um, the next thing I want to do is write activate list, and that's going to equal ds list create, and this is going to store the list of entity IDs that we find in this little square area. And something I like to do now whenever I create a DS list like this um, that I know I'm only going to use for a short block of code is go ahead and write in the DS list destroy ahead of time um, uh, list just to make sure I don't forget to remove that list when I'm done with it. And then we just do all the rest of our code in the middle. Okay, in fact, I'll just collapse this window entirely. Um, and it's even bigger still. Okay. 
So we still we want to bring this uh, variable here back, this activate variable, which is going to start off equaling no one, um, because if we have if we don't find anything to fill it with, then we just don't need to change it, right? Uh, it's possible that this should have actually been a var like these with an underscore yellow text and so on because we only really, I think, need it in this step. But I'm not going to bother refactoring that to change it um, just because it looks like, oh, actually, this should maybe have been one of those and wouldn't that be somewhat more efficient? Because I don't, I don't know, you know, um, with a project like this, maybe one of these scripts or something relies on this activate variable and I don't I don't know and the effort involved on behalf of my brain and searching through to check that is simply not worth it all right um, I'm only making a point of explaining this because I think it's important to not try and over refactor your code as you're writing it and be like oh this one little thing might be a little bit better because you might even end up creating a, an error or a problem for yourself because of something you'd forgotten about and at best um, if that doesn't happen, you've made a really tiny optimization. <laughs> um, so I'm not going to worry about that. Um, var entities found is going to equal collision rectangle list. And this is our function. We're going to have quite a lot of arguments for this function. Um, and since we've got a big font here and everything, um, to prevent this from going massively off the end of the screen, we're going to split this over several lines. I'm just going to leave some white space and put the bracket down here. Um, so as you can see at the bottom here, it's in very small text. Um, I'll hopefully remember to do a zoom in and the edit. Um, we need to give it um, the coordinates of the rectangle and then just a bunch of other stuff for how the collision should work, which we'll get to in a second. So the coordinates for the rectangle are just going to be a combination of the activate x and activate y, adding and subtracting the activate size. So we end up with an eight by eight rectangle, which is gonna be our first x coordinate is gonna be activate x minus activate size. So, you know, wherever we're going to activate minus four. And the y is gonna be activate y minus activate size. So wherever we are in the y axis, minus four. Um, oh, forgetting the commas there. Comma on the end of each line. Activate uh, x plus activate size, so four in either direction. And activate y plus activate size, comma. Okay, and then the last few arguments we need to write. Um, first of all, the type of object we're looking for in this collision, which is of course p entity, comma. Um, whether or not this should be a precise collision. Um, it should not. We're just going to use bounding boxes, so false. Uh, not me, which basically will rule the object that is calling this function out of the collision check, which I'm going to mark as true, even though this is being called by the player who is not themselves an entity. If for whatever reason in your game the player becomes an entity, which is, I guess, hypothetically possible, um, we want to rule them out of this check. We definitely don't want the player to be able to activate themselves. <laughs> um, so true. Uh, the list which we've created beforehand uh, that we're going to populate with the IDs of any entities we find is activate list. And then last of all, ordered is going to be true. Um, what ordered will do um, is mean that when we call this function, um, and put those IDs into this list, they will be in a particular order, and that order will be based on the distance of each of those um, instances that we found, um, the distance from each one of them to the center of the rectangle. Okay? Um, pretty arbitrary as a, uh, as a way to order it, and the only real reason I'm doing it is so that when we do have cases of overlapping entities, there's a clear and consistent way in which our game responds, okay? If we do actually have two things that can be interacted with overlapping, the game has to decide one way or another which one to pick. And if we put it on false, it's just going to be random or arbitrary, based on something that we don't understand, okay? It's going to be based on game maker's own internal, however it decides to assign them. Okay, however it found them in the first place, all right? Which we don't know. At least putting it this way, when it happens, we will know how our game is going to respond, okay? It's going to order them based on the distance to the rectangle. So that's the main reason why that's true. Okay, so take a moment to make sure all of your commas 
are in place on the end of each one of these arguments and not on the end of the last one. Um, and then make sure your bracket and your semicolon is here at the end. Okay, um, so now we've got all those IDs um, in a list, we need to go through that list and find which um, which entity is the one we want to activate, if any of them. Okay, so if the first instance we find is uh, either our lifted entity, so the one we're carrying above our head, or it has no script, try the next one. All right, that's what we're going to do. So uh, while entities found greater than zero. So if I didn't mention it already, entities found contains the number of uh, collisions that we find with this uh, function. So while that's greater than zero, um, we're going to go through each one and we're just going to reduce that number by one each time and that's how we're going to cycle through the list. Okay, so while entities found is greater than zero, var check is going to equal activate list open square bracket vertical pipe uh, minus minus uh, underscore entities found close square bracket semicolon. So we've written lines like this before, although I'm not sure if I've ever covered, forgive me if I have, I'm not sure if I've covered minus minus and plus plus before. So I'll just go over that real quick and we'll explain what we're doing here. Um, there's a thing you can do with any variable, say um, number equals seven, um, number plus plus. Okay, so by putting plus plus on the end of uh, this variable, that will increase number by one. Okay, and so will plus plus number for that matter. Uh, number minus minus will subtract one from number, and so will minus minus number. But there is a fundamental difference between putting it at the end of the line and the beginning of the line. Whenever we write a variable uh, into our code, it's going to, your game maker is going to find that number. And if we're doing that, say, uh, if number um, greater than, uh, less than five, for example, and I don't know, say number equals five. All right. So at the moment, uh, this line is uh, not true, right? Because number is five, um, so it's not going to be less than five. And if I do number minus minus, you might think, oh, number subtracting one, uh, that would make that four, so that would be true. No, it wouldn't. Uh, by doing minus minus at the end of here, or, or plus plus, or whatever for that matter, we return the number first, so we return variable first, uh, and do that check, and then afterwards, we subtract one from it. Okay, so that would be is five less than five, uh, which it isn't, so don't do that, and then subtract one. Whereas if you do minus minus number, it will reduce the number first and then return what it is. Okay, so that's saying might subtract one from this and then return it. So it's that would then be four. So four is less than five, so that would be true. Okay, apologies if I have been through that before. I don't think I have but um, I feel like that's probably a good reminder, at least, if I haven't, because uh, it makes this line a little easier to understand. Um, and that's because, obviously, um, a list is going to start from entry 0, okay? So if there's two entries in a list, it's going to be 0 and 1, but entities found would be 2, because there are two entries in the list. So we want this number minus 1 to be the furthest, uh, the bottom of the list, as it were, okay? So I'm going to subtract one from it and then return it. And because we're doing that in the loop, we're going to do that every single loop. So that's going to make us work our way down the list. Hopefully that is clear. And then when we get to zero, um, that, that, that's when we're done. So we don't need to check any more. So check now contains the ID of one of these instances, okay, in this order. So if underscore check does not equal global dot I lifted and uh, underscore check dot entity activate script does not equal minus one. So if those things are the case, then um, we can say that, yeah, let's go ahead and pick this entity to be the thing we want to activate. So activate will equal check. Okay, so that becomes that ID. And then we're going to write break. 
as a quick way to just end the while loop there because we don't want to keep going and looking for more things once we found an instance we don't want to you know, keep looking for more to activate we're just going to end there and move on uh, you could also write entities uh, found equals zero instead of breaks then it would do the same thing right because it would just come back around to there but I think break is clearer because they're both trying to do the same thing uh, but this is just more direct about it okay um, I think that's the better way to do it so uh, with that being the case and then we destroy the list once we're done with it um, the only other thing we need to do is down here um, where we say if activate equals no one or activate entity script uh, equals minus one uh, we already know that that won't be the case because otherwise we won't have uh, made it the thing to activate. We do that check here now so we can get rid of this on the end of here and just say um, if activate equals no one because of course if activate equals someone or some ID we know it has a script so then we can go into this very safely. Okay um, that's all there is to it so I'll run the game now and hopefully as you can see it didn't work why didn't it work well this these two lines here at the start are why it didn't work okay uh you'll recall me saying near the start that we um we're just leaving those lines as is because oh yeah we just still just want 10 in each direction um <laughs> the, the problem is uh, we need to account for the position of our player which is included right there in my script it says that i don't know why i skipped over it um, obviously when we did instance uh, position before we did it with x plus activate x and y plus activate y uh, but we forgot to bake that in for this collision check so I'm just going to go to activate x and be x plus length to x uh, 10 direction and y plus length to y 10 direction okay actually taking in to account the player's position otherwise we're just checking in the top left corner of the room uh, <laughs> for entity collisions which is obviously no good all right so hopefully now when we run the game okay we can pick things up we can pick things up we can throw them upwards now that's cool um if i throw them into the grass we don't have any problem on saying the grass can't be interacted with so let's skip over to the pot and we now check um in a much uh in a much better more scalable way we check a little square area so now hopefully when we talk to this guy we can we can more consistently talk to him like even when we're just sort of down a little bit like that it's a little bit more lenient more forgiving and all just feels a little bit better okay okay uh, why, why is it i get to the end of every one of these episodes having made some sort of terrible mistake recently i don't know that's just sort of how it be <laughs> But, um, but we got there, okay? Um, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this one. I'll catch you next time. Thank you, everybody, for all your support and for putting up with the slower-than-usual release of content. Thank you, in particular, super special thanks to all of my supporters over on Patreon.com. Huge shout-out in particular and in no particular order to the following. Samuel Wazier, Andrew Gilbert, Kaza Ho, Flaming Ewoks, Carter Green, Justin Adega, Alex Schenkel, Goose, Joran Pater, John Harwood, Zach Collett, Figgy, Relentless Rex, Cabbage Pants, Tyler Hubble, Leo, Scott Matthews, Mark Burgess, Samir Nyalagaglo, Rene Dam, Zephyr Flame, Rupinda, Hare, Dark Rider 0318, Jason, James L. Anderson, James Siggins, Do What Doobie, Hyungjin, Bertie T, Daka Dondigo, Robert Churches, Bowser the Dog, and Max M. Thank you all ever so much and thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.